Hello everyone, and welcome to the iRat Gamer Commentaries. I am Mash, I will be your host. And I'd like to preface by saying I have no idea exactly how I'm going to do these. I think I really want to edit these instead of just doing running commentary because firstly, I am, I'm not the best speaker in the world, and secondly, I really don't think I'll be able to come up with things to talk about for the entire duration of all the episodes, so I think what I'm gonna want to do is really just pick out the bits that I want to talk about and just talk about those, rather than do a full running commentary. Kind of more like a behind the scenes featurette in a way than uh, actual running commentary. And I hope people don't mind, uh, and no offense to people who can pull off running commentaries like uh, like the Save State game or Phil and people like that. It's just, I don't think it's my thing, so that's how I'm gonna do these. I'm thinking I'll start off the this commentary series with kind of an introduction to me and kind of an introduction to how the time and the place kind of give it some context to the creation of the iRate Gamer. Now, I know a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, come on, you just made iRate Gamer parodies in 2009 when everyone was doing them. And you're right, I mean, I wasn't a revolutionary or anything, but just kind of as a way to introduce you to me and provide kind of a background look at what was going on when I decided to make the iRat Gamer, I thought that I would start off with something like that. And if you're not interested at all, that's fine. I totally understand. Just skip this video. And the next video, I promise, will just be a commentary on episode one without any without any boring personal backstory or anything like that. But if you are interested, then that's what uh, I'm going to talk about in this one. I don't know how many people have noticed, and I only really found out about it because I looked at it recently when I was thinking about ways to start the commentary. Um, but the very first episode of the iRat Gamer, the Sonic the Hedgehog episode, about a week ago, a couple days ago, has turned four years old. And that is, to me, absolutely insane. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's been four whole years since I've done that, uh, since I did that video. It feels like I could have done that, you know, a year ago at the most. At the same time, it's weird because it feels like it's a whole lifetime ago that I did that. On, on the one hand, I'm like, it wasn't four years ago. And then on the other hand, I'm like, it was a whole lifetime ago. And where I get off with such an inane contradiction is my life was entirely different back then. Um, I'm going to admit first off that I was 13 years old when I made that video. Um, I was in my first year of year 7. In Australia, um, high school runs from year 7 to year 12. And I was in my first year. And at this point in time, I was in the middle of my winter holidays, as I am actually right now, because in Australia, we're on the wrong hemisphere of the world, so our seasons are swapped, basically. So I was in the middle of my winter break, and I was doing nothing, because I don't want to get all, you know, sappy and pathetic and uh, emotional because, um, well, it doesn't really have a place here. But in, in this first year of high school, I really didn't have any friends. And I know that sounds so, like, pathetic and so, like, attention-seeking, but it's really true. I didn't have uh, any friends. Uh, my whole life revolved around just video games and video game reviews on the internet, specifically stuff like AVGN and everything surrounding it. You know, I would go into school every day. I didn't miss a day of school, but I would go in. Every class, I would sit by myself in the back corner alone, or if I had to sit next to someone, I would never talk to them. And at recess at lunch, the only thing I would do would be go to the library and read about video games. It was literally my entire life. And when I would get home, if I'd either play video games, I'd watch AVGN, or I'd work on my own videos. Yeah, I had my own channel uh, where I wanted to... I was a big fan of AVGN and also uh, Classic Game Room, if you've ever watched that. And so what I tried to do at 13 years old was, uh, was basically put together a combination of AVGN and Classic Game Room, where I was mostly informative, but also with a little bit of... Um, a little bit of the humanism, I guess, that uh, AVGN brings, because a lot of AVGN videos about the experience, whereas Classic Gamer is more just about 
informing you about the game with some humor thrown in, obviously. And so that was my idea. I was putting those together. I didn't get much homework back then, so every weekend I would, I would film these shitty little videos where I was basically just talking about retro video games because I loved retro video games. Then I know this sounds ridiculous, you know, a 13 year old that likes retro games, yeah! No. But I did, I really loved NES games, I was into Contra, so into Contra. Uh, but especially uh, PS1 and Dreamcast, those were my two favorite consoles at the time. So many good PS1 and Dreamcast games, honestly. And that was my life, and I, I, these videos predictably never got anywhere, but I didn't really care, I just wanted to do them. Of course, being a big fan of the AVGN, it didn't take long for me to find out about the Irate Gamer, and it didn't take long to, for me to find Irate Gamer parodies and fall in love with them too. Irate Gamer parodies became probably my second favorite thing after the AVGN, and then like my favorite thing after the AVGN went bad. I really just, I really enjoyed them, and so Irate Gamer parodies, just watching Irate Gamer parodies started to become a large part of my life as well, as well as all these other things. Now, my favorite IRA gamer parodies was, were definitely uh, Igstridge or IGSRJ. Um, I, I call him Igstridge because, well, he does. <laughs> I, I liked. I really liked the Retard Gamer. I know that IRA gamer parodies has recently uploaded it under the terrible IG parody series, and I can understand why it, they could be considered terrible. But at the time, I really liked them, and I still get a kick out of watching them today but they're probably not quite as, like, intelligent as the other ones. My favorite irate gamer parody in, you know, retrospectively, because they aren't really making any irate gamer parodies anymore, except for me, apparently, um, is definitely the Save State Gamer, and just him as a person, Phil as a person, is a really interesting person, and continues to have really interesting videos, and I definitely recommend you check him out if you haven't already. Even though he's not doing Safe State Gamer, a lot of his stuff now is still really interesting, and his blog is interesting too. But I'll stop, you know, sh shamelessly promoting him. But at the time, I was really into Retard Gamer, really into IGSRJ. I liked a lot of the smaller irate gamer parodies. You know, of course, I, I enjoyed Irritated Gamer and Third Rate Gamer. But the ones that stick out in my mind more are the ones like Retard Gamer, I Wikipedia Gamer, uh, an irate parody. You know, apart from the Safe State Gamer. I'm not entirely sure why, um, it just kind of connected with me more, I guess, uh, watching those ones. But even though I was really into these, it took... I remember it taking a really long time until I actually decided I want to get into this. It was during when I was playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Of course, on a genuine Mega Drive, because that's what the Genesis is called in Australia, on a genuine Mega Drive with a genuine cartridge, plugged into my TV with an RF adapter, that's how genuine it was. It had to be genuine because, yeah, I was kind of a purist, I didn't even use emulators when I was into these retro games. Uh, and I was just playing through, you know, the first stage of the Green Hill Zone, as I do in the video, and it just started kind of occurring to me, things that I could say, and I, you know, I got up to the little loop where uh, the iRat gamer tries to jump over it, and I thought about I could make him try and jump over this, and it would be really funny. And, you know, as I said, this was in the middle of my winter break, and of course, the next day I had nothing on because I didn't see any friends during my winter break because I didn't have any friends. I saw no one, and I had all the time in the world. So I thought to myself, you know what? Tomorrow, I'm gonna dedicate all of tomorrow, and I'm gonna make an irate gamer parody. At the time, I didn't think it was going to be big or anything. I didn't care where it went. I didn't plan on making like a whole series. At the time, really, what I was just thinking was I'd really like to try this because I really love these things. I didn't really care where it would go because in my mind, my official show was the little dinky video game review show I was doing on my personal channel at the time. So I didn't have, you know, grandiose plans for anything like this. I was just like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's put it together. I spent the whole day putting together Sonic the Hedgehog. I, you know, downloaded an emulator, downloaded a ROM, because I didn't have any at the time, everything was genuine. And I recorded it all, put it in Windows Movie Maker, and then I uploaded it. 
um, just to see what would happen. I, I don't remember thinking anything about how popular it would be or anything like that. I just remember being amazed that like the next day it had a couple hundred views and a bunch of comments from people saying how funny it was. And I was like, wow, I might actually be onto something here. So even though I had no plans, I decided a couple days later, I would make another episode. And people started saying they really liked my videos. And they started subscribing and they started commenting a lot. And I, it just seemed really amazing for me at the time. I mean, here I was, this guy who, you know, I guess didn't fit in at school, had no friends, saw no one in his holidays, didn't really feel like he amounted to anything, to anyone, he was making these videos that were apparently making people laugh. And that was just incredible. And I was just so enthusiastic about it at the time. I, I made the first four during that winter break, you know, spending about one day on each one. And it started to really mean something to me that people were enjoying these. I remember being psyched, absolutely psyched, that 1176 had watched and commented on my videos. I mean, now I'm like, wow, they're awful. Why did he even waste his time with them? But, you know, back then and now, I'm just like, wow, he actually watched and he seemed to even enjoy my videos. Those sorts of things are things that I really remember now and get kind of nostalgic for. I mean, I know I said, I know I, I made this whole sob story about not having friends or anything, but I honestly do get kind of nostalgic about that time in my life where when my life revolved around video games, I guess when my life could revolve around video games. And the biggest, you know, conflict in, in my life was that Chris Boss, you know, ripped off the AVGN. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't care much about that now, but I, I guess maybe it's just me getting nostalgic for simplicity. Anyway, I should really wrap this up. I know I've just gone on an enormous tirade about my life and I've started going all nostalgic and stuff like that. And I'm sure that a lot of people aren't really enjoying or caring about any of this. So I'm going to wrap this up. Next video, we'll go into more depth about episode one and everything like that. And I hope to see you then. I hope you didn't get too enraged from, uh, from this commentary. Anyway, see you next video for the episode one commentary.